Hey there, CPO here. Let's get these uh, DT750s ready. As you can see here, they don't come with bullet connectors, so we'll have to do that. Uh, and then the other thing is, uh, the way these wires are loose on the bottom, it's common to put epoxy to hold them in place so they don't wiggle and vibrate uh, and eventually break. So we'll take care of that too. All right, so to remove this base, we need to take off these two little grub screws that are holding it on. I like to put it into this little uh, vice that I have. It's a little hobby vice I got from Harbor Freight. I'll just lightly clamp it in here and uh, that'll hold my motor upright while I can work on it. Then I'll grab a 1.5 millimeter hex and remove these two grub screws that are holding this base on. Not remove them all the way, just loosen them up and it should slip right off. I wanted to have something ready to hold my motors after I applied epoxy so I'm using this helping hands uh, to hold the uh, two of these motors and I'll use the vise to hold the other one uh, but that'll lock them in uh, and just hold them upright while the epoxy dries. So I'm just using a paper plate to mix up the epoxy and I'm using a five minute epoxy. Uh, if you're not familiar with using epoxy um, a 15 minute may be a little bit easier, a little bit more forgiving on time. Just put down equal parts of the resin and the hardener and then mix it up thoroughly for at least about 30 seconds. I used a wooden craft stick for this part. Just be careful, um, we are playing with moving parts and glue. So you don't want to actually glue your motor uh, into a paperweight. So be careful when you do this. So for actually applying the epoxy to the motor, I'm using one of these little bamboo skewers. Uh, it's small enough that I can get in there and work without uh, making too much of a mess. Be careful that epoxy is a little stringy sometimes, so don't let it drip into the wrong places. And then just make sure you coat both underneath and on top of those wires, and that'll eventually lock that into place. Keep in mind, once you mix up your epoxy, the clock is ticking. So you have to be careful uh, and manage your time accordingly while at the same time uh, don't uh, let that stuff get any place that you don't want it to be. Of course, you're going to want to do this for all three motors at once once you have that epoxy mixed up. And then just let them sit for a while to set up. I would leave it at least probably 15 minutes. And when you're done, it should look like this. You should have those wires locked in, uh, both uh, hardened below and above. And just make sure that everything moves freely uh, and nothing's locked up. You didn't get epoxy in the wrong place. Now we're going to put the base back on. Just slip it on down. I'm going to use a blue Loctite to secure those screws whenever I reattach them. When you put the base on, make sure you pull it as high up as you can uh, towards the C-clip when you tighten down the grub screws. So actually, it'll be pulling it down further away from the bottom of the motor. That'll make sure that center shaft doesn't rub against your boom whenever you mount the motor. This grub screw on the bell and shaft should be tight, but just double check it and make sure it can't hurt. Now I'm going to put on the bullet connectors. I bought this 10 pack from Hobby King when I got the motors. Just remember, you have to buy bullet connectors. The motors don't come with them. And of course, we're going to put the male end on the motors. Here I'm following the advice of retinning the motor wires, even though they're already pre-tinned, before you actually put the bullets on. I'm using a helping hands, and uh, basically I'm pre-loading the bullets with solder first, and then I'll add in the wire from the motor. Just make sure you hold everything really still while it hardens. So here we are with all of the bullets attached to the motor wires. So now we'll add shrink tubing. I'm just cutting off some pieces to use for this. I just use an inexpensive heat gun I got from Harbor Freight. Just turn it on and shrink them down. I've tried before to do them multiple at one time, but I find it just is easier in the long run to do one at a time. Just be careful because those bullets will get really hot. Even the ones that you're not working on will get hot right next to them. And here's what you should have now that we've uh, got that done. So there you go. That's all for now on these motors. I'll still need to cut the shaft and mount the prop, but this is good for now.